Oh, he ain't playing. Oh, he ain't playing. Hats on backwards. He ain't playing no more. He ain't play. He got a big announcement on Friday. He ain't playing no more. Playing. He's not. He's, he's coming at you. Like a pumpkin cholo. It's that time once again. We are back at it. Ranking bikes. Chopping them up. Dicing these things like onions. And just like when you cut onions, we're going to make some fanboys cry. Because this is the Yammy Rank. Hello, my sweet children. It is I. Instagram noob here, seriously, go follow me on there, get a sneak peek for what's coming on Friday of this week. Back once again to spoon feed you the wonderful motorcycle content you not only need, but also deserve. Today we're looking at middleweight naked bikes. One of my favorite, if not my favorite class of motorcycles. In case you're new to bikes, which chances are, as you're probably watching this channel, naked bikes are the absolute business. Why? Because they have comfortable ergonomics, which means the position of the bars relative to the seat and the pegs make them comfortable to ride around town. The engines are typically tuned for street riding, which means of plenty of torque way down low in the rev range, and they look awesome. While most normies will bemoan that they are ugly and that sport bikes are prettier, you can rest assured that naked bikes are the most patrician way to enjoy a motorcycle on the street. Unless you ride a supermoto, my child, then you are blessed by our wheelie lord, Subimoto. Sumo, my child, it is the light, it is the way. And as a side note, you might be wondering, why are they called naked bikes? Is it because they're undressed? Well, sort of. They've colloquially become known as nakeds due to their lack of fairings. Simple enough. Although that might not solve the weird looks that you're gonna get when you look up hot naked bikes on Google. A little awkward. Let's lay out the ground rules for these sort of bikes we're talking about today. Because there are a ton of naked bikes out there that are awesome. Seriously, there's a crap ton of bikes out there that are fun in this class right now. We're looking at bikes that have engines larger than 700cc, so we're not looking at bikes like the FZ07 or SV650, even though they are pretty sweet. Especially that FZ07. Hmm, it's almost like there's something I'm purposefully leaving out about the FZ07. Why am I still talking about the FZ07? Maybe there's something on Instagram, or not. So anyways, bigger than 700 cc's, but they have to be smaller than 1,000. This is because we're not looking at super naked like the Super Duke 1290 or the Yamaha MT10 or the Aprilia Tuono. Although there's gonna be a super naked ranking, boys, don't you worry. Also, the bikes have to be available to buy new. Otherwise, we're gonna be looking at Yamaha's FZ8s or any other manner of older naked bikes, which are still pretty sweet. So for the sake of my sanity, new bikes only. In our last rule, the bikes have to be priced under 13K, so we don't make sure we find any weird oddballs to fit this build too, like the Brutale. It's just too damn expensive. Other than that, those are the only stipulations I have for how I'm gonna rank these. I've ridden several of these bikes before, but not all of them. And I've actually owned one of the bikes on this list, the Yamaha FZ09. But I will try to not let that bias my decision making. There's also a noticeable triumph on this list, but I'll do my best to not fanboy about that. I'm gonna be researching, compiling as much of these as I can to make an informed decision for this ranking. And of course, before we get started, I'd be remiss to not mention that you should subscribe. The best way to stay up to date with all the cool stuff we got going on here at Yammy Noob is to smash that goddamn subscribe button like it owes you money, pay up! All right, let's do this. At dead last on our list, it's BMW for not having a middleweight naked bike at all. While this may seem like a cop-out, it's a shame BMW doesn't make anything in this category. I think they could do very well if they wanted to, but it might end up looking like another bike on our list here towards the bottom if they tried. BMW gets an honorable mention for producing the S1000R, it's the naked variant of the double R that we all know and love, but because it's over 1000cc, we can't include it on our list, so we gotta keep this rolling. So in true last place, we have the Harley Street Rod. Ah, you thought I'd forget the old Harley, huh? While the Street Rod does not fit most people's definition of a naked sport bike, if you look at the specs on paper, a naked street fighter starts to emerge. The Harley Street Rod is the old American brand's way of revitalizing and updating the Street 750 they brought out a few years ago. And while you might think that they came out with the Street 750 with some lightly reworked body panels, added some chrome, and is now charging you an arm and a leg for it, well think again, 
HD actually went back to the drawing board for this one, and it does show. Features an all-new 750cc V-twin, 12 to 1 compression ratio, new internals, making one of the most European-style bikes Harley's ever produced. And if you close your eyes, you can almost imagine it being a Ducati, but don't keep your eyes closed for too long. Jesus, you're still on a motorcycle. Pay attention. Now, let's get a quick sound check for while we're here. Now, why did old Papa rank the humble working class Harley dead last? Well, it's funny to call Harley Davidson working class when its customer base is primarily boomers with too much money than they know what to do with, but I digress. The HD falls short here simply because it's an awful value. You're paying a big old premium for a bike that just straight up doesn't have the go juice, the sports bike chops, or frankly, the character of the other bikes on this list. Their reworked engine, while it's a great feat for Harley and a step in the right direction, produces a measly 47 foot pounds of torque and was dyno tested to put down to the wheel 64 horsepower. When you can have almost double the horsepower for the same amount of money, the Harley starts to look a little more like a styling exercise and a clever marketing trick. Although the HD is going to come with 27 degree rake, which is much steeper than any other bike they produce, it simply just doesn't have what it takes to compete in the segment. This bike, although falling within our CCs and price parameter, competes more closely with something like an FZ07, but for my money, I'd much rather have the FZ. Another strange thing is that it comes with 160 rear width tires as standard, so your options are to try to fit wider rubber at the rear or to just deal with less rubber to play with. It's kind of weird. And at $8,700, this one clearly falls last place and kind of a skip for me. Up next we have the Suzuki GSX 750S. The K5 Suzuki Jixxer platform has been lauded as one of the best sport bikes platforms ever made. The 750cc version in particular has long been documented as one of the finest middleweight fully fared sport bikes that money can buy. Suzuki is actually the only manufacturer currently producing a 750cc inline four cylinder super sport motorcycle. It's a class that's kind of gone the way the dinosaurs, the 600s and thousands entered the fold. So how does the 750 variant in this naked bike fare? Well, it certainly has the beans that you're looking for. It's got 114 horsepower, and that's a hot engine that's definitely gonna light more of a fire under your ass than the Harley, that's for sure. All while costing around the same amount of money, too. However, the old school LCD dash, the unadjustable KYBs, and the 475 pound curb weight make this naked look absolutely last gen. However, for just 8,900 bucks, you get all the inline four cylinder sounds you could want. Take a listen. The main thing holding the Suzuki down in this placement is it's just not as competitive when you look at other bikes in the category. Although it has an electronics package, it's not as comprehensive as some of the other offerings on this list. It comes standard with a three level traction control, but no quick shifter or slipper clutch. Reviewers have also found that it has a throttle that's a little bit snatchy, and as a former FZ09 owner, I can attest how a snatchy throttle is no fun. A big plus, in my opinion, is that it comes standard with Bridgestone S21s. That's a great tire. The Suzuki just isn't competitive in this segment, and it's just a little less exciting than the other bikes on this list. Our next bike is the Kawasaki Z900. Part of me really wants to love the Kawasaki for what they're doing. They've reworked the Z800 from the big old pig that it used to be into this lighter weight Z900, all while closing down shop on the Ninja 1000. Kawasaki seems to have a winning recipe. However, it struck me that on their website they list it as a super naked. Uh, sorry, how does 112 horsepower compare with the other super nakeds like the S1000R, the KTM Super Duke 1290? Cowie needs to update the branding on that a little. One thing they don't need to update though is this exhaust sound. Let's take a quick listen. <laughs> So what gives? Cowie lovers are likely running to the comment section at this point, but while the Z900 has plenty going right for it, it's got that huge 947cc inline four, a reduced curb weight, and a slipper clutch, it's missing some critical components that would make it extremely competitive. Namely, some electronics. The Z900 comes with literally no electronics whatsoever, and that's surprising in a category that's really starting to bust out the big guns when it comes to tech. At long last, all that sweet tech from super bikes are trickling their way down to the naked class. Now, when will we see winglets on nakeds? Just kidding, but really, give me my winglets. The Cowie has been panned for lacking character, but I think it's serious value for the money. At $8,400, that's a whole lot of go juice. It's got proper sport bike suspension, and you can really chuck this thing down a twisty road, or even take it out to a track day if you're feeling zesty. Moving on to our next bike, the Ducati Monster 821. The Ducati 821 is a claimed new bike from Ducati, but how true is that? 
When the big Euro 4 hammer came down on motorcycle emissions, the duck had to be canceled, while Ducati scrambled to make the new monster compliant. They also went back to the drawing board super quick just to add some new flavors to it. The Ducati Monster 821 is an impressive machine boasting 109 horsepower at the crank and 63 foot-pounds of torque out of that 821cc V-twin. Is it face melting like the Monster 1200? Certainly not, and it's not meant to be either. The 821 Monster is a bike that, unlike most of the bikes on this list, is not home at a track. It can certainly be hustled down a twisty road, but its most comfortable spot is around town and fooling around, which is evident in Zucati's marketing for this bike. However, with a set of termies on it, it does sound great. Let's take a quick sound check. Some major detractors for the Ducati is its lack of a quick shifter. Um, they say it's a $302 option from factory. It's got unadjustable suspension that some riders might find soft too. And it's got a pretty spicy price tag. Seeing as Ducati is known for their premium, this V-Twin is gonna run you about $12,000. Now that is a lot of money, and certainly it makes it poor value in my opinion for the features it offers. But if you're really stoked on the Ducati brand and you wanna be seen on one, this is about as streetable as it gets. From my perspective, it finds itself about halfway down on a ranking today. Now we move on to the FZ09. It's the OG wheelie monster. Well, if we're not counting the Suzuki B-King, the FZ09 makes its way in the middle of our list for several reasons. One, it's the biggest displacement triple on this list. Three guesses as to what the other bike is. Two, if you want a bike that pulls like an absolute freight train, the FZ is the one to get. The FZ, in my opinion, carves its way ahead of the Z900 because it now features a revised suspension. So you no longer get some of those crazy mid-corner wobbles the old bike would give you. The throttle's been reworked apparently, so it's not as snatchy anymore. And while the suspension isn't fully adjustable, you do get rebound, which is more than the Cowie can say. At 420 pounds, it definitely feels like a lightweight bike when you're hustling through the turns too. And just for posterity's sake, let's get a sound check on this bad boy. Some downsides to the FZ, and this is from my experience in owning it, was the fit and finish did feel a little bit bargain to me. However, that might have been sorted out with the new version. And this new crop of naked bikes coming out on our list, it's hard to place the Yamaha above them. But for $9,000, this is one hell of a motorcycle for the money. Take it from me, I own one of these bad boys and I regret selling it literally every day. Our next bike is the Triumph Street Triple 765R. You might be surprised to learn I didn't place the Triumph as the number one bike on our list. But while old Papa Yan may be a diehard Triumph fanatic, I am able to see facts. The Street Triple is a class-defining motorcycle. The Street Triple 675 was the original naked bike to help Triumph make their bread and butter sport bike, and now they don't even sell a Daytona anymore. And don't tell me they're making a 765 Daytona, because they're not, and I don't believe you. So things are getting a little confusing with the Street Triple because they have three distinct variants with different horsepower outputs. But for the sake of this video, I am focusing on the middle of the pack Street Triple R, because I think it slots in nicely between all these bikes and the price point makes sense. The R comes with most of the goodies you would expect. It's got rider modes, TFT displays, electronic aids, and etc. And this bike is a weapon weighing in at 370 pounds, comes with fully adjustable shell of forks, and has 116 horsepower. And the engine this bike comes with is an absolute gem. 765cc triple, and it sounds glorious. Take a listen. So what's wrong with it? Well, besides a price tag that's a teensy bit high, in my opinion, it's completely worth it. The Street Triple 765 is basically a perfect street bike and it's all you're ever really gonna need. It's a do-everything bike. You can commute with it, you can take it on track, you can carve up your favorite roads, and you're not gonna have back problems by the age of 32. The only reason it isn't number one is because the number one bike is just so damn good. It just doesn't come with a quick shifter either, so it's tough, but now onto our number one spot. The crown goes to the KTM Duke 790. You'd be surprised to learn that this is KTM's first parallel twin engine they have developed on this first true naked bike they decided to build. The KTM Duke 790 is one of those massive leaps forward that only comes from a manufacturer taking a big gamble. Again, KTM has never produced a parallel twin before this bike, and yet they came out swinging and made a peach of a motorcycle. Everyone who's reviewed this bike has praised it for how fun it is. And having owned a BRZ a few years back, let me tell you, fun is something that's really hard to engineer. 
Anyone can build a huge horsepower bike, but designing a bike that's fundamentally a good time to ride is tough. Its nickname is the Scalpel and with good reason. It's got a featherweight 360 pound curb weight, 105 horsepower from its 799cc parallel twin, and it's a weapon. You can also get some class leading electronics with lean sensitive traction control, wheel control, quick shifter up and down. It's got an auto blipper, WP suspension, and the best part, it only costs $10,500. That's kind of a steal. Although it doesn't have the delicious sounds of the Triumph, the massive face melting torque of the FC, or the bargain basement price of the GSX 750, the KTM slides in as a bike that exceeds all expectations. Although it comes with some cheapo Maxxis tires and those WP forks are unadjustable, this bike is still my number one pick as the middleweight naked bike we're currently out right now. Now let's get a sound check on this bad boy. Some honorable mentions are the MV Agusta Brutale 800, which I didn't include because it was too expensive, the Aprilia Shiver 900, which was just a little too outdated, and the Honda CB650R, which is just too small of an engine to compete with the other bikes here. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, congratulate you, and I reward you with another segment of It Came From Craigslist, where I find three listings that encapsulate the good, the bad, and the ugly side of the internet's favorite listing service. If you have a bike you found that you'd like to be featured, go ahead and drop me a link at coalitionmoto at gmail.com. Gmail.com. Now let's roll into this one today. We're featuring bikes from El Paso, Texas. Don't know why I just chose it. First, the good, we have this super clean 2011 Ducati Monster 696 going for about six Gs. This has got to be one of the cleanest Ducatis I've ever seen on Craigslist. Even though it's a 2011, it only has 1300 miles on the clock, which means this thing has basically never been ridden. And with a bike like that, you're going to want to check that it's been at least turned on every once in a while and make sure the fluids have been moving in there. It's actually not that great for vehicles to stay parked for that long unless they've had proper care. Moving on. Now for the bad, we have this 1990 GSX-R750. It's just the absolute dustiest nugget you ever did see. 750s, as I previously mentioned in this video, are sweet little bikes and it'd be a shame to see this thing stay dusty forever, but this is one of those absolute nugget Craigslist bikes that I always talk about. $1,500 gets it done, but I think you could definitely walk away for 900 bucks for this thing. And finally, our weird, if you're a fan of the Craigslist videos I've done in the past, you know me, I love a sweet little mobility scooter. Now this one's extra Craigslist special because it needs a little TLC too. Every single Craigslist I've ever done has one of these mobility scooters to the point where I just need to pick one up as a meme, pretty much. All right guys, thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the awesome stuff we're doing here at Yammy Noob. There's a huge announcement coming on Friday. You're gonna wanna make sure you tune in for that. But if you can't wait, head over to my Instagram and check out what all the fuss is about. I'll catch you guys next time. See you later. Fact. Dish, Texas used to be called Clark in exchange for renaming the town Dish. It's couple hundred residents received basic television for 10 years and a free digital video recorder from Dish Network. Dish, Texas no longer gets free TV, but the name stuck. And that's good ROI on marketing dollars. Goodbye.